What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new episode. And today, as you saw in the title, we're talking about three things I love and three things I hate about my new 2021 Trek Marlin 7. All right, first, thank you to all the subscribers. You know, I'm at like 770 right now. I'm trying to hit that thousand mark. Uh, I hope you guys like the t content. Um, I, I kind of switch around with a bunch of different things. So if you guys don't like some of the stuff, skip over that video. There's always going to be something coming up that you will like. Um, but I really appreciate it. And thank you if you're a new watcher. All right, guys. So I've had my Trek Marlin 7 for about six months now. And I put a ton of miles on it. Right now, it's been really snowy. So I haven't been on the bike in a few weeks. If you guys watch my vlog, you know that I've been sick and some other things have been going on. But hopefully, I'm going to be back on the bike this weekend. So I wanted to talk about some of the things that I found about the bike that I really love and that I'm really happy with. And overall, I'm extremely happy with the bike. And then I said, you know, three things that I hate. And hate is a strong word, maybe a little bit of a clickbaity word. So we don't need to necessarily use the word hate, but three things that I wish were different or that could have been improved, especially for the price of the bike. So let's get into my first love. And that is the one by 10 gearing on here. So the one by 10, I think is a huge upgrade from a lot of the bikes that were in this price range or right below this price range. And that's because a lot of them had the two gears up front and you kind of had to fiddle with that along with less gears in the back. So moving to a one by 10, I think makes it a simpler setup, but also gives you a ton of range with the 11 to 46 tooth 10 speed back here. So the front, this is a FSA Alpha Drive 28 tooth. And in the back, you have the Shimano Dior M4100 cassette, which is an 11 to 46 tooth. So the gears on here are actually in 11, 13, 15, 18, 21, 24, 28, 32, 37, and 46. So we have the Marlin 6. My wife has the Marlin 6, and she has the two gears up front here. Um, and it, this is just a huge upgrade from that. I really like this drivetrain. I've had a lot of fun with it on the road. I can definitely get some speed. And then, you know, that, that 46 tooth really makes it easy on those hills, especially for an older guy like me. You know, I'm over 40 now, 41. And, uh, you know, I, I need a little help getting up some of those big hills on the trail. So that is one of the things that I really love about this bike is that one by 10. So what's the first thing that I dislike about the bike? And that's, well, I added on the PNW Cascade. So I can link you to that video so you guys can see uh, when I did this upgrade along with the Loma lever that's over there. And it's really nice that it has this internal routing here. But what I don't like is that there's no internal routing through the seat tube. So you can see the cable here and the cable on the outside here. So. I'm not upset that I got the PNW Cascade because I think it's a great dropper post. And you know, it is an external routed one, which is fine. I, the problem that I had is that the previous Marlin 7 supposedly came with the internal routing where it just had a hole in the back here. So you could pop it in there and run it up. And a lot of the dropper posts on the market right now are actually internal routed ones. So you get a bigger selection. Like I said, I ended up with a great dropper post, but I was really limited on my search because it, I couldn't do the internal routing. And because they had it on the previous model, I don't know why they took it out. Maybe they saved some costs, I'm not really sure, but uh, they did. And now I have these zip ties, which I don't like. I like really clean setups also. So not a huge problem because great dropper post, but like I said, it would be nice if it was a cleaner setup. So my second love <laughs> is actually, I posted a video about a problem I had, and that is the derailleur. So the Shimano Dior 5120, um, when you look it up on the Shimano site, it's actually the, uh, it's actually a Shadow RD Plus. You can check my other video because of some issues I had with it. <laughs> this is a really nice derailleur. And because I didn't know how nice it was because it has this clutch here, right? Which pops down. And I go over that in another video that I didn't know about that. And when it wasn't up and in, in the position that makes it stiffer, I was having problems with the chain falling off. As soon as I put it up here, totally different bike. I mean, this thing has been awesome no matter where I go. 
the chain stays on, it stays tight. I mean, you can see I have a little bit of a chain slap here, but it's really not that bad compared to some of the trails I've been on. And I'm extremely happy with that. So the, the drivetrain, the full drivetrain from the gearing to the derailleur, awesome. Huge upgrade from the Marlin 6. All right guys, so the second improvement that I see could have been on this bike is that the tires are not tubeless ready. Uh, they are XR2 comps and the sidewalls are actually too thin to go tubeless on these. So that's why they're not tubeless ready. So why would I like uh, it to be tubeless? You know, everybody talks about it. It's the cool thing to do. No, <laughs> that's not why. Um, you can actually run them at lower air pressure, which gives you better grip, um, which I think would definitely help me out on the trails. Uh, give me a little bit more confidence with some of the things that I'm trying to do. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool to be able to do that. Along with that, it's supposed to be lighter and it's supposed to uh, self-heal with certain punctures to get less flats. So you have uh, less chance of getting a flat than you would with the tubes in the tire. So the third thing I love about this bike is the fork. It has a RockShox Judy fork. And this fork is just extremely nice. So it has 100 millimeter travel. It is a coil spring, not the air spring version, but it is, it has a lot of functionality and it functions very well. So it has the lockout here and it also has preload on the other side. I have it preloaded all the way. I weigh about 210 to 215 uh, any given day. And out on the trails, I've had absolutely no problems. This thing has been so smooth. I can compare it to the Marlin 6 because my wife has it. And that has like a Sun Tour. I forget exactly what it is. And that, that's an okay shock. But this is like a, a whole, a whole huge difference from that shock. So uh, this is definitely worth the extra dollars when we're talking about moving from like a Marlin 6 to a Marlin 7. So this is one of my favorite things on the bike. All right, the third thing that is an issue for me is that there is no ISCG or the International Standard Chain Guide mounting system. So on a lot of the bikes, the actual mountain bikes, you know, this is a cross country bike, but on the actual mountain bikes back here, there's actually different tabs um, where you can mount certain things to here. And what I want to mount to there, and you know, obviously, International Standard Chain Guide Mounting System, you can put a chain guide on there to help keep your chain tightened. But you can also put a bash guard, which is basically a piece that comes down here and protects the chain and the gear. So in New Jersey, where I am, it's extremely rocky, but it's fun to hop over those rocks. But I can tell you already, I've almost been caught a few times where I get my front tire up, and I see right here, I mean, the rock before the back tire gets on it, the rock is getting really close to here. And the last thing I want to do is bend this gear or destroy the chain, especially when I'm out in the middle of the trail, right? So that's why they have those bash guards that come around and protect there. But you can't, I mean, there's probably a way to do it. Um, but the easy way is to use the ISCG mounting system, um, but it's not on here. So I can't mount that easily, especially the nice ones that are out there that you can buy. That, that are also recommended. So that's my three things that I love and three things that can be improved about the bike. Um, obviously there are things to consider. The bike 100% is an amazing bike and is exactly what they say it is. You know, it's like that beginner mountain bike. It's still a cross country bike, but it gives you that ability to kind of get out on the trails and see if you really like it and upgrade to the next bike. So the bonus item I'm gonna throw in here, which is a love and needs improvement <laughs> is the price. So the price of this bike right now is listed as $899.99. Um, it's about $200 more than the Marlin 6. The Marlin 6, I believe, is $699.99, and I think it's worth every penny for the upgrade just because of the drivetrain and the fork. I think that that $200 is well worth it to jump to the Marlin 7 instead of the Marlin 6. However, as you start riding, the, the thing that I didn't know was how into mountain biking I'm actually going to get and I got pretty into mountain biking pretty quickly. So I saw as I was trying to go down stairs, um, as I was going down hills, trying to hit some jumps and stuff, immediately the seat kind of got into weird positions for me. And being in weird positions, it's like, hey, well, that's why they make dropper posts, right? So I gotta throw it on there. So now I have 899 plus the PNW Cascade plus the Loam Lever. So the 
PNW Cascade runs about 180 bucks, and the loam lever is another 70. And that loam lever functions really well. I really like it. But you know, now that's an extra $250 that you're putting in to an $899 bike, right? So <laughs> you're up there. So above the Marlin 7, when you really get into the mountain bikes, you know, you're hitting into the Roscoe's, the Roscoe 6 and the Roscoe 7. Now the Roscoe 6 comes in at uh, $1,099, which is about $200 more than this bike. And I just said I spent $250 on the dropper post and the loam lever. Now the Roscoe 6, I'm not gonna talk too much about because it has some differences, but it has a lot of similarities. It's really the Roscoe 7 that I think you need to consider. So the 250 bucks I spent on here, I don't think I should have went with the Roscoe 6, but looking at the Roscoe 7, the Roscoe 7 comes in at 1349. So that's a $450 increase over this bike. And I spent 250 already, so that's $200 off. So what would I have gotten? So with the Roscoe 7, you get the same RockShox Judy fork, but it's the air version. So the air version, you can actually load up more. You can preload it more because you can pump air into it. Um, what else? It comes with, uh, and it has 120 millimeter travel, which is nicer than the 100 millimeter travel on this one. Uh, it also comes with Maxxis recon tires that are tubeless ready. So that covers one of the things that I thought was a problem. Um, and then it comes with a SRAM 1x12 system instead of a 1x10. So I don't have an issue with the 1x10, but you know, it would be nice to kind of have that 1x12. You don't really need it, but, well, I don't really need it, <laughs> but you know, it's always nice to have that uh, better system in there. And then it already comes with a dropper post. And now the argument is, is that I probably got a nicer dropper post than what comes with that, or at least I would think so with the P&W Cascade. I think it's an amazing dropper post. Um, but you know, for that $450, more than this, which is actually a 50% increase from the actual price, you get a ton of additions. Now, one of the things you also need to consider if you're thinking about that is that the Roscoe 7 comes with 27 and a half inch tires, whereas the Marlin 7 comes with the 29 inch tires. So you can watch a whole bunch of videos on that. You know, there's a the whole idea that maybe the 29s can go over um, bigger objects easier, uh, whereas the 27 25s may not be able to, but the 27.5s may have better turning. And there's a ton of videos discussing that more in detail than what I can go into. So you guys should check that out. But if you're considering, if you're looking at a Marlin 7, but thinking that you're really going to get into it, I would definitely consider the Roscoe 7. The Roscoe 6, I would probably skip on, just stay with the Marlin 7. That's just me. Um, but, you know, price is definitely one of those things. The price is great, though, because versus the Marlin 6, like I said, for an extra 200 bucks, you're getting some really great stuff on here. So I like the price, but if you're gonna upgrade, or you think you possibly might upgrade certain items on here, then it's definitely worth considering just moving to the Roscoe 7. Beyond that, you're looking at a full suspension system, which is a whole different story. Um, but as far as the hardtails go, that Roscoe 7 is a nice bike. So those are the different things that I found after having this for six months. I'm gonna continue with this bike. I don't really plan on doing additional upgrades for the reason that I could have probably just gotten the Roscoe 7 and it would have had a lot of those upgrades. Uh, I'm not really looking to sell this right now either. I still have a lot of room for growth and I don't see it being an issue for me, especially now that I have the dropper post on here. Um, the tires, like I said, maybe tubeless ready. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wear these out completely you know, tires do wear out. So at that point, I can always buy tires that will be tubeless ready and I can go tubeless at that point, right? So at that point, I don't feel like I'm just throwing out tires that I got that are new. It's that I would need new tires at that point anyway. So I'm really happy with the bike. Those are some things I found. I hope that helps you guys out if you're thinking about making different decisions as far as you go with the Marlin 7 or maybe something a little bit more expensive. Things I found that were amazing and things that I felt that needed a little bit of improvement or could use some improvement, but of course the price would probably be higher. Would be nice if it fell into that same price range, but that's why there is a more expensive bike that has those different pieces. So I really appreciate you guys watching and I hope that you guys subscribe and I will see you guys soon.